you are watching the Calvary. Yeah, y'all, it's been a crazy nine days with this new presidency. Am I right? Shoot, I want to know what you all think. Look, I mean, when you sit here and you just think about all the what's going on, watching these people, you know, get get stuck, you know, at the airports and actually overseas as well. You're like, what in the hell were the previous administrations? And I mean, previous neoliberal administrations doing because they really weren't moving us forward, you know, in terms of our base. All right. You know, and that, that includes the Clintons as well as the Obamas. But at the same time, that's not what in part what I'm here to talk about. I'm here to talk about looking at it from the aspect of when dealing with white supremacy, the amount of shit that certain parts of the black community falls for, that it's OK for Barack Obama to not move any of his liberal base forward now we're looking at donald trump in nine days he's put out about 18 executive orders super quick and moved his party his base his republican base forward instantly now obama was sitting up here talking about well maybe not in 100 days maybe not in the first term and it turned out not even in the second term i mean this dude was a goofball but like i said I'm not here to actually talk about that. I want to talk about the other goofballs in the community. Now, it's been enough time that we all know exactly what went down in Fort Worth. That basically, like King said, justice delayed, justice denied. But think about the fact that you had these three African-American women there who were able to be arrested by this idiot white racist white supremacist cop and he didn't have to call for backup and you want to know why it's because the african-american woman's unfortunate i don't know thought process puts her in a position where she said i can do bad all by myself and this is what all by myself looks like it looks like three Fools with no protection, no protection against white supremacy. So how many more of you fools are out there thinking that you could call the police on brothers, put brothers in jail, set brothers up, put them on child support payments, and then they end up in jail losing their cars and, and jobs because of it. Now you're in a situation where well, you who's, who's going to protect you? Is it going to be the Indian man? Now he got his own woman. Hmm? Is it going to be the Mexican man? Nope, he got his own woman too. Is it going to be the Asian man? Nope, he got his own woman too. White man? Nope, he got his own woman too. And he doesn't give a shit about your black ass. Never did. His whole end goal was to put your men in jail so he would have control over the community the way he likes the community to look. Insane, aggressive, lots of shootings, and easy to put the males in jail. And when it comes to you guys, well, he can just come in and do whatever, as you can see here. Black woman, you thought if you could help white supremacy deal with that big old bad black man that you hated so much, that he would love you more, right? that he would trade that that pale white woman in for you oh how foolish you look now you the only fools who wouldn't have sense enough to respect your own security now you realize that you need them big old smart black men you need them lames because because those are your lawyers they're your protection. They're the ones who have sense, who know how to get those charges dropped and get you some justice, or at least out of jail. And then get that paperwork in, those motions in, those lawsuits. You need those brothers. Well, let's listen to one right now. 
I wanted to be um, uh, clear on a couple of things. When the we did have a chance to speak with Jacqueline Craig, and we, we actually arranged a phone call between Mr. Miss, Miss Craig and uh, Chief Fitzgerald, and he made the announcement to her that he planned to drop the charges against her and her family. Uh, and he probably didn't receive the um, reception that he had hoped for. Uh, we've all heard it said by Dr. King, justice too long delayed is justice denied. For over a month, her and her family have been under the cloud of criminality. Uh, for over the past month, uh, really immediately after this incident, she was taken to jail. She was placed in handcuffs and placed in, and placed in a cell with her daughter. Anybody who has had to experience that unjustly knows how humiliating that process is. And so she has been humiliated in the public media, in her community, uh, for the past month. And on this day, he came to her and said, congratulations, we're, we're no longer pursuing the charges against you, although we feel like the charges against you were valid, uh, which was a, an additional slap in the face. Uh, and at the same time, he said, by the way, the person who grabbed and hurt your son will never face those same handcuffs, will never see a cell, will never face uh, felony charges. Uh, now, what they uh, uh, arrested her on was, in fact, Class C misdemeanors. Uh, and so Ms. Craig was, in fact, uh, arrested on Class C misdemeanors, and she still had to endure the humiliation of a jail cell, the humiliation of, uh, of a car ride downtown, the humiliation of being transferred like livestock from one jail to the next, and being held over until her, her attorneys work uh, for over 18 hours to see her and her daughter released. Uh, that's what we call colored people justice. And the, um, uh, when I say colored people justice, it's as if there are two different standards of justice in our, in our country, uh, justice for people of color and justice for everyone else. Uh, and so, no, this is not a celebratory time for us. We've made four demands from the beginning, uh, and that demand is the demand that any American would expect. Uh, when someone assaults your child, your minor child, you expect that, and, and they hurt them, that is a felony assault under this uh, Texas law. We demand equal protection under the law for ourselves and our, for our children, certainly for our women. Uh, and so that, should, that, that individual should have been charged with a felony. Their failure to do so is a failure, not a day of celebration. Uh, the fact that they dropped charges and still said those charges were valid without admitting that their officer falsified records in order to bring the charges in the first place is in fact a failure. Uh, the fact that they failed to fire an officer who has been now exposed as uh, someone who has continually engaged in excessive force uh, is a failure. Then uh, the fact that that, that officer to date has, uh, the d district attorney has not contemplated charges to grant Grand charges have not been presented to the grand jury on that officer who was guilty of assault on a minor, again a felony, uh, falsification of records, uh, false, in, uh, false imprisonment, uh, uh, official misconduct, uh, any number of other um, uh, crimes that any other American, if they committed perjury, uh, if any other American, if they committed, they would be facing jail time to say that that, that person will endure uh, a 10-day vacation and is back on a job, although in another location other than the Craig family home is a failure of the Fort Worth Police Department in the city of Fort Worth. Somehow, black women, y'all gonna have to turn this around. You're gonna have to figure out a way to respect black men and get them back into your lives, for real. And you ain't gonna do it by focusing in on the interracial couples. You can, hey, I'll put you this way, you can listen to Tariq Nasheed all you want. But, uh, to tell you the truth, that brother's in an interracial relationship as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, I mean, I'm gonna let y'all know, my next video is gonna be in part, in part, all about Tariq Nasheed. And y'all gonna have a real good one. Y'all gonna have a real good time with this one, for real. And, and the reason why is I ain't got to go super in depth because if y'all been paying attention, that brother's been focusing in on brothers and interracial relationships for some time now. Done came up with a, a few choice words from, from white supremacy land to call brothers and interracial relationships. But I got one for him and he's going to cut that shit out or else I'll have another one for him and then another one for him. Ain't shit he can do about it. Not a damn thing. Because the one thing we do know is that brothers in interracial relationships like Tariq, who is in one, 
have a hell of a focus, a laser focus, and we're good at destruction. But again, wait for the next video. You will be pleased. So to all you brothers, you you mad bus driver exes, you, you Jim Millers who've been bothered by being called coons, well, I got the remedy and the answer for that. But back to the community, look, we have to, you know, get past certain subjects. Basically, the Spike Lee 1990s. That was a stupid damn period because Spike Lee's a stupid ass man. As you can tell from the gender war, he left out so many things when it came to his movies, when it came to black relationships. That's because the motherfucker didn't know shit, all right? He didn't analyze it. He didn't dissect it the way the brothers from past the millennium did. Now we, yeah, we grew up in the 80s, we grew up in the 90s, but when we became extra conscious, we were able to look at everything and not from a myopic point of view, not from a narrow window. We were able to look at the damage done. And the truth is, Spike Lee did some hellified damage. And we learned how much damage is being done from, let's say, you know, the, his, his new type of um, clone like Tariq Nasheed, all right? So we look at these brothers, they, Spike Lee married an extremely light-skinned chick and then wanted to point towards, but look at those interracial brothers, all right? And the same thing's going on with Tariq Nasheed, but he's in a whole different type of relationship, an interracial one like brothers like me is just the truth and there's a video out there where Tariq literally dances and floats all the way around the subject it's between him Charlemagne the God and some white dude and it is amazing because the full story about who Tariq Nasheed is married to comes out and you go and watch this watch this brother in my next video dance dance all around it now all i'm saying is is that you look at the culmination and then you see the honeysuckle hotel and you see the how embarrassing it is when you got a, a couple sitting at a a black restaurant spending their money with black people and being harassed now does the honeysuckle hotel ever White, white supremacy? No. Honeysuckle hoteps and sassy hoteps fight the brothers who are fighting against white supremacy, who are trying to make sure that his hard earned money goes to black people. That's how absolutely stupid these people are, those spike ladies. Now, others are basically engaging in the con game a con game to where they're marrying biracial women, which is an interracial fucking marriage. Bottom line. Then one to come on over and say, but no, no, my relationship's okay because look at them interracial brothers over there with the white women and the Asian women and the Mexican women and the Cambodian women. <laughs> See, it's just to throw you off the trail. Why? so they can go ahead and make their money doing the pro-black thing. And the reality is, is that they know that they wouldn't be able to because they know black women would be, would be pissed off with all these Mariah Carey's getting married, with all these Stacey Dashes getting married, and with all these Rashida Jones getting married, and they're not getting married. So he has to fake it, con it, in order for him to make a dollar, to make some documentary, uh, historic movies and stuff like that. The same thing Spike Lee did. So he can make a dollar making pro-black movies. But marrying the, the, the lightest, the whitest black woman or whatever he can find. If you look at it, they fit the criteria of the interracial brother. So I stumbled upon this about nine years ago when researching interracial brothers to see what value they have put forth within the community. And Tariq Nasheed, more so than, than both of them, actually fit the criteria of an interracial brother to the T. 
I literally stumbled upon it while looking at a bunch of interracial, you know, historians. It was kind of uncanny that the brothers who were in actual interracial relationships were historians and working hard to deliver information to the African-American community so that we would know our lineage, our heritage. And that also includes the, that also includes the Henry Louis Gates of the world. And so if you put it all together, those brothers who deal in facts, who deal in history, seem to be married to, well, non-black women. And why? It's because they have time to actually complete tasks because their lives aren't filled with too much yik yak and craziness, uh, court drama, uh, family out of just out of out of this world. You know what I mean? Just like constant, constant crazy shit going on. They have time to think. But also this with that time to think, I actually stumbled upon something else. While, while partaking in an African-American restaurant. And that was, and this is gonna amaze a lot of you brothers because a lot of you brothers either have high blood pressure or maybe close to having high blood pressure but trying to maintain everything. And they always ask you, are you on blood pressure medication if your blood pressure levels are a certain um, you know, height? But what I've learned while visiting this African-American restaurant, which is pretty amazing, is that they got two drinks. Two drinks within this, uh, well, three really, but, but, but two that's important. One is called Bissap, and the other one is called Bao Bao. All right? Now, Bissap is a drink that comes from hibiscus petals. Now, you can look it up for yourself. You ain't gotta take my word for it. Look it up for yourself. You're going to find out that Bissap, when made, will lower your blood pressure without you having to take any medication. And this is the craziest, coolest shit. So I'm not saying that, you know, you brothers who are on blood pressure medication that you stop, but try it. Try it. If you if you sometimes you skip a day. Well, on that day that you skip a day, have the Bissap and see if your blood pressure stays at, at that constant rate. If it does, then you can you know try it again periodically until to the point where you don't have to be on the blood pressure medication anymore because you know medication costs, all right? But try it, but most definitely get yourself a blood pressure tester. You know, one on your arm, one that goes high up on your arm and not on your wrist. The wrist ones are inaccurate. Like I said, the cool thing is, is that you can find this information now all on the internet. All right, uh, WebMD talks about it. They talk about the hibiscus petals and the fact that you can make tea out of it. And you can also make a really cool drink, an African drink called Bissap. Now, you know, just for further information, I'm not saying, I'm not saying that you drink this drink one time and you're good, no you're gonna pretty much have to drink the drink for the rest of your life, but it's an awesomely tasting drink. But the Africans have been doing this for, you know, a really long time. And they they started making it out, you know, in Senegal. Now the other drink is called Bao Bao. And this drink is also really good. It, 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 it does a few things, it lowers your blood pressure, and it's great to give you healthy bones and teeth and to fight gingivitis, as well as it has antioxidants. It also has really good properties for, for women who are going to get pregnant or who are already pregnant. So a lot of African women actually drink this. Now, the, the thing is also when it comes to the Bissap version, unless you're trying not to unless you're trying not to get pregnant, don't drink it, all right? If you're trying to get pregnant, just stay away from it <laughs> because it is also used in Africa to control pregnancy. So it changes women's hormones so that they don't get pregnant. So just keep that in mind. But for men, because we don't get pregnant, this means it's, it's, it's just great. So you can have it and you can lower your blood pressure. 
the women, they should have the bow bow. It will lower their blood pressure, but not nearly as fast as, let's say, the uh, the BIS app. So this is just one of those things that you should just try it. Now, again, the medical community already knows about this. So I'm just sharing the information and I'm also sharing how how black men are able to accumulate information. Now, if you black and you don't know about it and you've been to an African restaurant and all that good stuff and you still don't know about it, that's why the interracial brothers, they're important because we disseminate information. We don't sit up here and look to see who your wife is and all this other goofy shit. <laughs> that's just dumb. But look, check it out. Bisap and Bao Bao which is an you know two awesome african drinks used by africans quality shit realize that all medication and pills and stuff like that are derived from plants and flowers and other types of minerals and shit you know from around the earth so to have a a a drink that is really easy to make by the way i know you have probably like well shit how do you make some shit out of flowers well look put it this way Take your ass to Whole Foods, buy some hibiscus leaves, and then all you do is, and you don't have to use all of them. You, you put a fair amount in a pot full of water, but make sure the water's filtered. You know, you want the best, all right? You put, you put the leaves in, in, in a pot and you boil it, you know, a pot filled with water, you boil it, and it will turn that water freaking beet red and you're gonna be like this is a lot now then you just fill an empty bottle all right you can probably get about uh, a liter liter and a half two liters out of it so boil you a couple pots get rid of that bitter taste add add sugar but just don't add you know regular you know like American crack sugar white sugar add agave you know as your sweetener and you add it to the point in which is just that you'll still get the bitter taste, but don't go all the way super sweet. Now, when you go to the restaurant, it's going gonna, it's gonna to taste sweet than a motherfucker. All right. But, you know, just don't go that far. You know, just go where you can still get the bitter taste. The oddest part about it is, is that it looks and tastes very similar to grape juice. Very similar. All right. With that, with that bitter taste with it. It, it will just get to that point where it's sweet but bitter. It tastes like grape juice, looks like grape juice, but it's actually doing wonders for your body, wonders for your heart. So you don't have to worry about, you know, you know, having high blood pressure, which is diabetes, um, heart attack, um, kidney disease, losing your kidneys and stuff like that. So you'll have a, a better, healthier lifestyle, both men and women. Now. Uh, with, with, with making a drink also make sure it's cold it's best cold you know you don't need it to have it lukewarm unless you're having the tea so a lot of good benefits there oh also one other thing and this is really important if you're already on blood pressure medication don't take it in conjunction and the reason why is because you don't want your blood pressure too low if your blood pressure is too low then you're dead <laughs> So that's why you don't want to take it in conjunction. So it should be on that day or days, you know, um, in which you, you haven't taken your blood pressure medication. Now, also, and this is the last thing I'm going to say about it. They don't know the recommended dosage. So think about having a cup a day or think about, you know, just taking a few sips you know, like a quarter cup, you know, every once in a while throughout the day. But again, it's a super fun drink. It's really, you know, natural and it, it can actually change your life. And so that, that way, when you are, you know, you go to the dentist or you go to the hospital and they, 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 they check your blood pressure, you'll get those normal results versus, Hey, are you on any blood pressure medication? Instead, you can be like, well, you know, um, they, they'll say your blood pressure is normal. And you're like, yeah, that's because, you know, I, uh, I, I drink a, uh, a hibiscus drink. I basically an African drink called Bisap. You know, I'm sure you heard of it. 
and it keeps my blood pressure regulated. And I check my blood pressure regularly because I have a blood pressure monitor. So now, now you're competent and now you're living longer and now it's all natural. And again, one of the really cool things about this drink is that it tastes so damn good. It'll blow your mind. It'll blow your mind. So this has been the Calvary and I'm an interracial brother, proud of it. And I took me, my wife and my mother to an African restaurant and spent my money and learned this information and pass it along to you because I am blacker than them Hotep brothers and them Tariq Nasheeds, period. Hands down, ain't nothing you can do about it. You've been watching The Calvary.